Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to part number 9 of my bookcase tour. So today we are going to finish off the letter D and get to the letter F as well. So that's exciting. In the last video I took you through my Colin Dexter collection. So we'll just continue from there. So first up we have The Runner of Little Races by Ray Diamond. This is actually a signed copy. It says to Dane, best wishes Ray. And I picked this up after seeing Ray read some of his poetry at the Poetry Cafe in London. I actually performed there as well. I had like a, a featured set, I believe. And so I did like 20 minutes of poetry or something. I will read you one of Ray's poems just so you can get a feel for his style. This is Among Tortured Chickens. The light has been drained of all nutrients. Special offer on sheep's testicles. So much choice, a snowstorm of shape and colour. Instant disability as you pass the security camera. The plastic Guantanamo Bay is electronically tagged. The wafer-thin ham has fallen through. The wafer-thin carrier bag. Hate your neighbour as yourself. Am I my brother's jailer? Log jam of trolleys around the rotten fruit. Fighting is broken out over the boxed fungus. The staff have opened fire. Many dead and wounded. Can we blend them? Okay, here we have a little bit of Philip K. Dick. So we have Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which is the novel that Blade Runner is based on. And we also have Our Friends from Frolics 8 here. Basically, the friends from Frolics 8 are like these like gelatinous globs, these slime creatures who like are able to like tap into people's minds. Thor's Provoni, the revolution's leader, returns after a 10-year intergalactic search for help, and things take a decidedly unusual turn, because the 90-ton protoplasmic slime that accompanies him seems pretty determined to create a new world order. Very cool. Okay, then we have some Dickens. So we have A Christmas Carol. Fun fact, I first read this in July. Don't know why, it's just when I happened to have it. And uh, Oliver Twist as well, which I first read when I was about seven or something not this specific edition of it but i read i don't know a edition of it anyway and yeah bit of dickens i need to read more dickens but i don't know i have to really be in the mood you know okay then we have a marketing book so this is global content marketing by pam didner how to create great content reach more customers and build a worldwide marketing strategy that works and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I've got a lot of these marketing ebooks, so it's hard, really, to recommend this over any other. But, you know, if you're into marketing, you might find it interesting. Okay, then we have Outlandish Night by Minu Dinshaw. And this is a book that I was sent to review. Basically, I sat on the shadow panel for the Young Writer of the Year Award. I'll link to below for a playlist for all the videos I did on that. And basically what it involved was there were five books shortlisted and the shadow panel all read the books and then we all met up and discussed the books and we picked our overall winner and then we saw whether that tied in with what the judges picked. It did not. We picked the best book. The judges picked the worst book. But never mind. I'm not bitter. This is a big old biography of a guy called Stephen Runciman. And so you can see the title, Outlandish Night, The Byzantine Life of Stephen Runciman. And Runciman was basically like a, a, a scholar of like, you know, Byzantine civilization and art and history and that kind of stuff. And Runciman was at school with like a bunch of people like he knew uh, George Orwell and the Queen Mum and like lots of people like that. So there's a lot of name dropping in it, but it's I right. don't think I would have read it had it not been for the uh, Young Writer of the Year award thing. But Okay, then we have Limon Ditson, Please Don't Ask. So it says, this is an eclectic mix of spiritual and secular poetry written by Limon Ditson. And to be honest, I don't really remember this one. This will, this will be one of the poetry books that I just... I basically said yes every time someone offered me a poetry collection, you know. But it's not really my kind of poetry. But I'll read you one. This is To Sing. This grand event, this threshold of life, by cause of the opening of eyes, passes shortly to this final affair. An ending, this closing of eyes. Yet all is not nothing, for between opening and closing is a chance to sing a unique song to the eternal. Yeah, please don't ask. 
Okay, then we have Dizzy Spells, and I guess this book is also just called Dizzy Spells. This is a signed copy as well. Two day, not a love and best wishes, Dizzy. So, Dizzy Spells, I'll show you the cover. That's kind of a pretty good representation of what she looks like. And, um, yeah, she's a poet from... Well, she lives in Marlow, which is where I used to work. And, uh, yeah, her stuff's pretty cool. I mean, let me read you this. This is called Techno Fuckingology. Halfway through my eBay list, I meant to click on categories. Missed. Click delete instead with my shaky mouse. Fuck off, I screamed and cursed around the house. Now I have to start from scratch. Me and Patience are on an even match. I tried to message a Facebook friend. The link was returned, it would not send. I found a picture of a purple polar bear. I wanted to, but I couldn't share. An oops box said, something went wrong. We'll try to fix it, won't be long. Can't get my Mopix up, what a pain. The battery's flat, run out again. My memory stick has now got stuck. Computers save time, what the fuck? A blizzard of Tourette's and I feel much better. Then I sit down calmly and write a letter. I will admit, that one <laughs> is kind of riddled with typos and grammar fails, but actually I do think I gave this kind of a bad review. I always feel bad when I read a book from a friend that isn't particularly great, but you know, it's, it's fun. All right, then we have DK, Eyewitness Travel, Milan, Pocket Map and Guide. And yes, I did read this entire thing before going to Milan. I thought I would go through. Here we go. Here are some of the things. Here we go. Oh, that's, that's fun. I circled Naviglio Grande there. And I actually wrote a poem about the Naviglio Grande. This is a canal in Milan. And then while I was there, I wrote some poems. And one of them was one I memorized. So I'm going to do it for you now. All hail Milano, city of surprises, where beauty spots blend with building sights and sightseers scorn motorists careering wildly across tram lines. Bad buses built for bored drivers and a change is as good as a rest, my friend. All hail Milano, where the tea is milkless and the tourists are taxed, the money pocketed by corrupt Caribbeanieri, where the city grinds to a halt on sunny Sunday days after 24 hours of rain, where the dogs are nicer than people, church steeples keep appearing, dank with the rancor of homelessness and piss, beggars begging, pickpockets picking pockets, gentle old Italian women escorting their bambinos south of the city centre. Milano, you've been good to me like Coventry, you have the Dutch debauchery in Birmingham's buildings. Milano, the representing the eternal war between science and religion in the Santa Maria del Grazie and the Museo di Storia Naturale. I don't know. Everyone talks about Milan as being this like really beautiful city and when I went it was just lots of scaffolding and graffiti and really horrible people there as well but I digress. Anyway, here we have Cory Doctorow. I think I have two by him. So this is Essential Blogging by Cory Doctorow, Raoul Dornfest, J. Scott Johnson, Shelley Powers, Benjamin Trott, and Mina G. Trott. And this is The Complete Idiot's Guide to Publishing Science Fiction by Cory Doctorow and Carl Schroeder. And both of these were pretty shitty, to be honest. Uh, I would not recommend either of them. I mean, to be fair, they're also supremely outdated. Like, what's this one? This is published... This is published in 2000. And I, I'm, I have to say, the publishing industry has changed slightly since 2000. But I have tried to read some of Dr. O's fiction as well. And I DNF'd it. So I think he's just not an author I get on with. Oh, we have Julia Donaldson. So this is Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler, the Gruffalo. A mouse went into the deep dark wood. Oh, that's quite depressing as well. It says Tabitha's book. But I bought it used on eBay, so it's my book now, Tabitha. And then I have the sequel, The Gruffalo's Child. Yeah. I mean, they're all right. We all know what The Gruffalo is. I don't really know why I got them. I just wanted to read them, see what the fuss was about, I suppose. Okay, here we have Alcedo, a, je a collection of poems by Steve Donahue. No, sorry, Jeffrey Donahue. And... <laughs> Yeah, I'll just read you one of these. This is by Austin McCauley, it's published by. And, uh, I don't know, I have problems with Austin McCauley because they're a vanity publisher that masquerades as a, not a vanity publisher. So, for example, I had an email from, like, their acquisitions team inviting me to submit my novel formally to them. And I submitted it to them. 
And then, like, three months later, I get this, like, publishing agreement from them to sign. But it, in the terms of this agreement, it's like the writer agrees to pay, like, £2,400. And I'm like, hang on a minute. I'm not paying you to publish my book. Especially because a lot of the books that I've... Right, so here's my problem with books by Austin McCauley, is that you can you can tell that people have paid to have them published. They're, most of their books seem to be written by people with money, but not necessarily talent. Anyway, this is Memento Mori. That all too brief immediacy is stolen on the wind. Time has dimmed the memory and the years have not been kind. You see reflected in the glass a face no longer beautiful, for all things must pass into the unknowable. Where now the look in your dancing eyes, that light and laughter once shone through. It ages, fades and dies, where now that flame inside you. Where is the love that burned like fire, lost, lost in the virginal frost, quenched along with a varnished desire, a pale and pitiable ghost. So half rhymes appear to be the order of the day in that one. All right, here we have Freelancing for Dummies by Susan M. Drake, and I guess I read this when I was going into freelancing, I don't really remember it too much. Okay, here we have Bob Drozdovich, and this is the author's guide to working with book bloggers. So, Bob used to be represented by Book Troop, which is the publisher that published No Rest for the Wicked, my book. And uh, books available at danecobain.com forward slash Amazon, by the way. Forward slash Amazon USA, for those of you in America. And and uh, this is, in fact, the, the Book Troop edition of this as well. Actually, I really enjoyed this. I mean, considering how out of date some of these other books that I've mentioned have been, this one was pretty pretty good. Previously published in 2013, but this is the kind of updated version from 2015. Then we have... These are all by the DSA, which is like the Driving Standards Agency. So we have the official DSA Guide to Driving, the Essential Skills. We have... The official DSA guide to learning to drive. We have the official DSA theory test for car drivers. And we have the official highway code. And I've read all of these cover to cover. Can I drive? No, I cannot drive. I've never even had a lesson. That is no testament to like the quality of these. These are fine for what they are, you know. Next up, we have... Daphne de Maurier, Rebecca, and I will link to my review of this below. Basically, I enjoyed it, but this edition of it, I mean, I feel as though the cover has a spoiler. This, anyway, led me to guess the ending, which didn't actually happen until the final page as well. It was very irritating. And the introductory essay by Sally Bowman, which is put in there to pimp out her Rebecca's Tale, authorised by the de Maurier estate, which, by the way, does not need to exist. And her introductory essay, full of spoilers. And people said, well, you shouldn't have read the introductory essay. No, they shouldn't have put spoilers in the introductory essay. And also, I don't know, I feel like it doesn't need it. I mean, yeah, sure, it says it's like a Varego modern classic or whatever. But this was published at the same time and even after some of the Graham Greene and Agatha Christie books that I've read that did not have an introductory essay. And honestly, this doesn't need one. It doesn't need one. Okay, next up we have Paul Denoye, We All Shine On. The stories behind every John Lennon song, 1970 to 1980. And that basically tells you everything you need to know. I mean, there are pictures in it and stuff. Is that him with Phil Spector? Yeah, it is. It's him with Phil Spector. He's, well, he's dead now and he's in jail for shooting his wife. Hey, Google. How long is Phil Spector in jail for? According to Wikipedia, from 2007 to 2009, he was the subject of a trial and retrial for murder. He is serving a prison sentence of 19 years to life and will be 88 years old before becoming eligible for parole. He ain't coming out then. I did read that entire book again. Jesus, that one was one of like the bane of my life books. I think my mum got it for me for like birthday or Christmas or something. Now don't get me wrong, I am grateful. Thank you mother. But... When she buys me books like that, that are like reference books slash coffee table books, I'd feel bad getting rid of it, but I also can't keep it on my shelves unless I either intend to read it or have read it. So I had to read it cover to cover. And I mean, I really like John Lennon, right? 
but it did get pretty dull, <laughs> like, after a while. There's only so many times you can read, like, this song's about Yoko, and this song's about Yoko, and this song was about Yoko, and you're like, oh, fucking hell. Wonder what the next song's gonna be about. Sorry, don't mind me. Next up, we have Nikki Dudley, Exit Slash Origins, and we also have Nikki Dudley, Hopal Delete. Now, these are probably both signed, yeah. To Dane at socialbookshelves.com, all the best, Nikki. So this was from the Knives, Forks and Spoons Press, as is this one, actually. And here she wrote, Dear Dane, a fellow lover of words, I hope you enjoy this, Nikki Dudley. And Nikki went to the same uni as me, and then she was co-founder of a literary magazine called Street Cape Magazine. So, basically, that's kind of how I got to know about her. I think somebody, one of my lecturers or whatever, told me about Street Cake. They probably had submissions or something. And we've kind of been in touch throughout the years ever since. She actually, she blurbed some of my poetry uh, for my poetry collection, Eyes Like Lighthouses When the Boats Come Home. I'm going to read you uh, back from Hope Alt Delete. Actually, that's a really long one. Fuck it, we'll do it anyway. Signs cracked eggshells, once promising life. Benches, black homeless. Street lights flicker in embarrassment. Chewing gun, acne plague, puberty is a trace of blood washed, never reborn, went back. People ripples drifting from center of memory, losing definition. A photograph reproduced, 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 image through water, went back. Houses cold, skin wrinkled, dulled in conversation. Barricades, the trees, protesters waving, screaming, were forgotten, left leafless. I went back. Shops closed their mouths, opened them. Memories smeared on glass, cannot hide. Back went I, when I went. I went when, when back went I. Flats tower over houses where quiet park used to hibernate, where trees laughed and dogs crapped. Back. The shit is a footprint, into new luxury builds, into underground tubes like vermin. The signs cracked eggshells, once promising life. Benches black, homeless, street lights flicker, houses cold, skin wrinkled. Leafless shops close their mouths, will soon curdle, hibernate, where the plague, puberty, barricades. Nikki Dudley. Nikki Dudley, ladies and gentlemen, yay. Okay, this is The Pocket Rough Guide to Amsterdam, written and researched by Martin Dunford, Pil Phil Lee, and Caroline Thomas. We'll leave that bit of footage in of me calling him Pil Lee. Why not? And, um, yeah, I mean, he's quite a visual guide. I did read this whole thing again. I mean, it does have some stuff. I've been to Amsterdam, like, four times now. I would say it's my favourite city in the world, really. And um, I've never needed to get another booklet, you know. I just take this one each time. It's, uh, it's lovely, yeah. Here we have Graham Greene, Friend and Brother by Leopoldo Duran. And Duran is a Spanish Roman Catholic priest and he was basically a close friend of Greene's. You, if you know much about Graham Greene, you probably know he's considered like a Catholic writer, I guess. I don't know, I'm not religious at all and he's one of my favourite authors. So, you know, I don't think it does him any favours to describe him as a Catholic writer really. But anyway, this is by his priest friend. It's a biography of him. It's good, you know. This is just a well-written biography of Graham Greene. Here we have The Look Ugly series by Paul Durham. So this is The Look Ugly. Shiny, look at that. It's like an iridescent cover. The Look Ugly's Dishonor Among Thieves. And then we have The Look Ugly's The Last Reckoning. Reckoning. And I believe this actually has a different name in America. And this is like a YA trilogy about a young girl called Riley. Her dad is a dude called Harmless. And, um, I, I, I mean, it's, it's kind of like fantasy, but it's relatable fantasy. Let me read you the blurb of the first one. Look Uglies was a name whispered around the docks and darkest taverns, places the law dare not tread. Rye has grown up hearing the legend of the Look Uglies, notorious outlaws who once stalked the streets, but she's not convinced that they ever really existed. Then, on the night of the Black Moon, a mysterious stranger steps from the shadows to stave Rye's life, and a thrilling adventure begins. Rye will need all her courage as she unveils a secret world, discovers the truth behind the legend, and learns that sometimes it takes a villain to save you from the monsters. So yeah, if you're into like YA, yeah. Probably my favourite YA series, I guess. 
Then we've got some Bob Dylan. So we have Chronicles Volume 1, which is his first volume of autobiography slash memoirs. He's never actually released a Chronicles Volume 2, so don't let the name fool you. But yeah, interesting. Very much worth a read. I actually reviewed that recently for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon, so links below. And then we have Tarantula, which is, I guess, it's like a stream of consciousness rambling, basically. Uh, it says here at the start, Tarantula is Bob Dylan's first book, the only book he has ever written. He wrote it in 1966. And, uh, I don't know, it's a bit... He's clearly, like, just trying to imitate, like, Burroughs and... Well, not even Burroughs. It's more like Ginsberg. He was spending a lot of time with Ginsberg at the time. And I guess I stole his style a bit. I will read you a little bit. Page 75. Unresponsible Black Knight Crash. The United States is not soundproof. You might think that nothing can reach those tens of thousands living behind the wall of dollar, but your fear can bring in the truth. Picture of dirt farmer, long johns, coonskin cap, strangling himself on his shoe, his wife tripping over the skulls, her hair in rats, their kid is wearing a scorpion, the scorpion wears glasses, the kid, he's drinking gin. Everybody has balloons stuck into their eyes. That they will never get a suntan in Mexico is obvious. Send your dollar today. Bend over backwards or shut your mouth forever. The bully comes in, kicks the newsboy, you know where, and begins ripping away at the audio repairman's shirt. Yeah, here we go. And we have Aftermath by Dinah. Uh, I think this is the book that claimed to be a true story and was about like a haunted house. So that was a bit of a bit of a clash for me. Okay, then we have Dynamo, Nothing is Impossible. So this is Dynamo's autobiography. And I bought this because he linked to it from his Facebook page, being like, you pre-order it and you get a free signed copy. It's not technically a signed copy, it's a signed plate stuck to it or whatever. But it's still pretty cool. And yeah, it's interesting enough if you want to know his autobiography. I'm sure he didn't really write any of it, but you know what I mean. St standard celebrity autobiography, really. Actually quite poorly typeset, considering it's published by Ebury, but whatever. Okay, then we have a Texas Rattlesnake, the unfiltered, completely unauthorized story of Steve Austin by Scott Edelman. And yeah, I mean, it's a biography of Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's alright. It's kind of a bit trashy, but if you're a wrestling fan, you will probably enjoy it. I'm not particularly a wrestling fan, but I got this really cheap from a charity shop. Okay, then we have some Ken Edwards. So Ken Edwards is the founder of Reality Street Press, which is like a po poetry press. I was a Reality Street member or subscriber or whatever it is for a while, which basically means at the end of the books, they kind of name some of the people who are uh, subscribers of the thing. You know, I paid X amount a year and got some free books. It's quite you know, experimental stuff. So we have Bardo and Down With Beauty. I'll read you a little bit of Bardo. This is Sleepwalk. I love you, green. Green wind, green algae on the boat on the sea with horses barking. Penumbra of the gypsy moon, things watching, watching you. Ice underfoot where there has been shadow. Fish pursued by cats in a fearful place. Green blood. But I'm not me. I need to change trains here. Cold steel. 300 dark things sniffing around your crotch. No, I'm not myself, and this house isn't my house. Let me, let me go to the high towers, yeah, where water falls. So two mates climb up, leaving a trail of body fluids and the sound of crystal ringtones at daybreak. Where is she? Where's she gone? Into the green water swaying, the boat, the sea, the little horses. There we go. Here we have Lewis Efron, How to Find a Job, Career and Life You Love. This is one that I was sent. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I mean, I can look straight at it. I'm like, this is pretty badly formatted. I mean, it's just double spaced and whatnot, but lots of blank pages. It's your bog standard self-help book, really. I read a lot of them, got bored. Here we have Christina A Hint on the Edge of a Sword, translated by Ilma Letpair. And Christina Ahin is a poet as well. I'm going to read just a little bit for you of just like a select part of one of her poems just to give you a feel for her stuff. What's cool is it's translated from Estonian 
and it shows like the Estonian on one side and the English on the other. I will obviously read you the English here. And although I made you seven league boots, you can't come. Although I sewed you a huge shirt of immortality, you don't fit into it. My dear, you are free, like me and the seagull. You steal whole days, you have a reflection, you have a shadow, and the sun makes hair golden. I actually really enjoyed this poetry collection, I thought it was beautiful. It was sent to me for free, however, I did enjoy it. And uh, I'd like to read more of Christina Ahin's stuff in the future. So yeah. Then we have As You Wish by Carrie Elwes, Inconceivable Tales from the Making of the Princess Bride. I've already posted a full review of this, so I'll link to that below. But I thought it was great. I'm a big fan of the Princess Bride movie. And it was just, you know, to be able to read it was just a delight. It sort of, you know, rekindled my love for the film and made me want to watch it for the 109th time. And it was interesting. It wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be. But for a Beatles fan, you got to read it. If you don't know who Brian Epstein is, it's probably not the book for you. Then we have I Have IBS, Now What? by Dr. Ashkan Fahadi, MD, MS, FACG. And um, yeah, I have IBS. So I bought this book to kind of understand more about what causes it and what kind of foods to eat and all that kind of stuff. And uh, the good news is it's got a lot better since going vegan. So there is that. This is Up, Up and Away by April Law and Claire Fawcett. Cute little kids book about a dog called North. Today, North is having a day out with his friend, Oakley Owl, who has come to visit. I mean, it's just cute. And I had a connection to one of the authors. I think a friend of mine met them or something like that. Okay, then we have the two Jasper Ford books that I've read so far, and that is The Air Affair and Lost in a Good Book. These are the Thursday Next books. It's basically, I mean, they're bookish books. Like The Air Affair, for example, is about Jane Eyre. It's kind of like, uh... Douglas Adams and Terry Pratchett inspired, but not as good as either of them, I don't think, but still pretty good. Yeah, they're fine. I've actually got the rest of them up on my shelves, on my TBR shelves. I just haven't got around to reading them yet. Then we have FHM Presents, the original and still the best book of barroom jokes. Now, the only reason I already have this is because I, I guess I have it, yeah, it was published in 2001, and I think somebody gave it to me that year for like a birthday present or something. So I would have been 12. Possibly not an appropriate present, but uh, yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's FHM joke books, and FHM, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is uh, like a lads mag. It's like a titty magazine. It is a titty mag. A titty mag. And finally, for this, this video, we have The Adventures of Precious Penny by Dina Marie Filippini. And this is a kid's book about a penny. Again, it's all right. It's one that I was sent... And uh, I will show you the art style and whatnot. And I might as well read you a paragraph from it as well. After all the wet clothes were taken out, I was picked up and put in a big blue and white piggy bank sitting on the top shelf in the laundry room. Yeah, there goes Penny. Because what everybody needs is a first person children's book about coins. But for the next episode we have, uh, we'll have Ian Fleming who wrote the James Bond books. Gillian Flynn, Stephen Fry as well, and uh, looks like Neil Gaiman as well. So that'll be my next episode. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. If so, which ones you've read. If not, let me know which ones you'd like to read. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.